Ludwig is planning his next event. It is a speedrunning event, and Armada may be invited. I think that Ludwig should also invite Swiggy, and Swiggy and Armada should compete against each other in Mario 64 speedruns. Because this will destroy Armada's confidence and make him realize that he, the potential to be a Mario 64 speedrunner will always fall short to Swiggy. And then Ludwig should do the second part of the event, which is he should challenge Armada to a best of five match against his Puff. And he can make a joke about Evo 2016 and say, well, I know you might have a PTSD about Puff, but you probably will win against me. And if you beat me, you will get $100,000. And then the lights can uh, go off and a single spotlight will go on a briefcase. And in that briefcase is $100,000 in stacks of bills. So we want to, Armada to see the money in front of him. Because if he sees the money in front of him, that will make it harder to say no. So then Armada might say yes, he might say no. Now... This guy isn't that rich. Armada is pretty much... He has demonstrated he will do melee things for money. Because he did the Metafy documentary when Metafy paid him some amount. Or just promised to pay him. Probably Domo promised him, Oh, you're going to get like a thousand people to pay five dollars each, so you should do it, Armada. And so then Armada probably said yes to that. So, Ludwig will offer this generous offer of $100,000 just to beat him. And even if Armada is rusty, he will still win because Ludwig's skill in melee is it's good, but it's not god tier. And then Ludwig will do a prank. Ludwig likes pranks. He pranked us so many times, we didn't even know. The first time he pranked us, it was Ken playing Puff. It wasn't him. Like, who would have expected Ken to be there? Because Ken doesn't even play Melee anymore because his hands hurt. Well, his hands stopped hurting when Lowig offered to pay him money to play, huh? That, that sure erases the pain pretty quickly. And then, the second time he pranked us was with Zane, and he did a rest in a phantom. And at the time, it looked really real. And then afterwards, Zane says it was fake. It was a, it, the game was modded. Check the disc. But, like, why does he need to prank us? We were so happy watching him and Zane play already without the prank. So why does he prank? Because Ludwig kind of likes just the distortion of reality to his to what he wants. Because he he is the ruler of the gamers. He he is Julius Caesar. He he really respects gaming skill. Not a lot of rich people in this world acknowledge that gaming skill is something that should be respected. Because as all of us know, gamers were uh, not respected for a long time and in many areas of this world are still not respected. So the fact that Ludwig respects gaming talent shows that at least there is one guy out there who has millions of dollars and also puts top players on a pedestal and will will uh, bring them to him and give them money so they hang out with him and they entertain us because we get to watch the streams and we get to see our favorite gamers play. So it's awesome for us that Ludwig is doing these events it's awesome for Ludwig because he gets to hang out with top players. And it's awesome for top players because they get a paycheck. So everybody wins. Literally. So Armada says yes to 
Ludwig and says, okay, I will beat you with my fox. I'm not going peach against your puff. I'm not going to lose. I'm not B-Bats. I can't win against puff with peach. That's impossible. So then Ludwig does a prank. The first two games, Armada wins um, pretty easily. And the third game, something weird begins to happen. <laughs> Lawick's puff begins to hug the ledge really hard. Harder than he's ever hugged the ledge before. And Armada is just firing lasers, firing lasers. He doesn't really understand how to beat Ledge Camp because he's not Cody. He's not Moki. He, he never really learned this skill yet. And so then Ludwig gets some rest, gets some up throw rest, and destroys him game three. Game four is closer, but Ludwig wins. Then Ludwig looks Armada in the eye and says, I have something to tell you. I invited one of your friends. I invited Hungrybox. He wants to see you today. He misses you. He's your brother. He, he might not be genetically related to you, Armada, but he's your brother. He's your real brother because you both shared so many moments with each other, so many intense moments that nobody else went through except you guys. I want you to play him in game five, and I'm going to up the stakes. I'm going to give you $200,000 if you win. And Armada just stands there. He's like frozen. He's like, he's kind of pissed off and angry. He's fallen for a Ludwig prank like we always fall for them. Oh my God. Another Ludwig prank. But then, then Ludwig uh, snaps his fingers and five guys in business suits come out. And they're holding these like rags. And they say, Adam Lindgren, we have a factory in China ready to make these towels, these rags, for the Malay community. The Malay community has like 500,000 people in it. Probably 100,000 players and 400,000 fans. Everyone wants a gamer rag for their sweaty palms after they've played Malay for eight hours straight. So, we have an offer for you. If you sign this contract, we will get our factory in China to start making these rags with a little A on them. And you can sell them, and you get 25% commission. You will be rich, Adam. You will never have to worry about money a single day for the rest of your life. Just sign the contract. And so then... Armada gets to do something. He gets to make a ton of money and he gets to overcome the trauma of losing to Hbox in Evo 2016 because he, he will beat Hbox on stage. He will get like $200,000 and he will realize Melee is his future. Otherwise, he's just disappointing everyone. So that is how Ludwig will use his speedrunning event, and he will pull the greatest prank of all time and get Armada to play Melee again once more with a little incentive of money. The end. All right. Let's talk about our gaming scores. Melee this past weekend was really intense. The crowds were super active. The players brought their A game. The streams were going. There were four streams of quality Melee going at the same time. First, I want to mention another peach is Aura. Game 5 versus Zamu, Grand Finals. He did like a beast combo. An Armada beast combo against Zamu's Fox and just knocked her off the stage 
It was great. You should watch it. It's the second to last doc. Um, Glock and my Toyota in Boston. Boston Melee is crushed without Crush. Like, if Crush was active today, Boston Melee would have like 500 viewers. Instead, it just has like a very small amount, which is unfortunate because not a lot of people saw Glock, the Game & Watch main, beat Calvar, a uh, Marth. And he beat Calvar by just doing really simple stuff with edge guards. Uh, Game & Watch has a lot of mix-ups, and he can just go vertical with Marth and just knock Marth off his trajectory really easily. And Game & Watch also can throw Marth and just then just do parachute. And these kill confirms off grab, I haven't seen anything like it except for Hungry Box's puff. It's amazing. Before Glock faced Calvar, he faced Bonfire 10, and they were tied game three and 1-1. One, one, each had one game, and Bonfire 3 was up a full stock. And then uh, Cal uh, Glock was off stage, and Bonfire just kind of jumped off stage really lazily and just threw away her stock, and it tied the game up. And that makes me think, like, did she do that intentionally because she just wasn't feeling it that day and just said, okay, Nick can win. Game & Watch can win today. I don't care. Bye. Did she, was she thinking that? Is there a way to check if a player is throwing? Because if gambling becomes more of a thing in Melee, this is really important that if you bet money on someone and they just throw the game because they don't care and you just lose all your money, that that should be against the rule. Like you shouldn't, it shouldn't be allowed to throw games. So how do you check if someone intentionally SDs in a edge guard attempt? I don't know what you're supposed to do, but that's like a question Melee will have to answer when gambling gets added to Melee probably before 2030. Um, what other scores? Let's see. Oh, Slug. Slug did really well. He has a nice arm tattoo. He joined Moki and Jmook as really good players to get arm tattoos. And of course, Mango has a lot of tattoos. So Slug did really well, and he's been grinding on Slippy a lot. But like, dude, are you just going going to do three events a year? Are you just going to do two Philly locals, or sorry, two Philly regionals and one in Genesis a year? Is that is that your entire output? And someone in the chat that was popping off was Pew Pew U. And Pew Pew U has been popping off a lot about Melee recently. So I expect him to actually start entering more stuff. And he's good friends with Jmook. Jmook is an influencer. If Jmook asks you to play, it's hard to turn that guy down. Really hard. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, Slug played really well. Crick was up a game on him with Marth, and Crick went to Icy's and got destroyed. And then Crick went back to Marth and lost the next two games. So that kind of shows, like, if you're up on someone, don't F around with them. Because if you, if you take your foot off the gas pedal for one minute against a good player... You, you might just lose the entire set. So, and then the last event was a Texas event, which ended a day later than all the other events. Magi is like just showing she's the better player than everybody else. Man, Bobby got some really hot combos on SFOP. And like, he, he zeroed to death SFOP in the first, like, five seconds uh, on Yoshi Story, I think. And it, it's just like, wow, Bobby showed up. I wish he would enter more stuff. 
because we want to see Bobby like compete on again like win something huge. That would be really cool. Okay, that's all the melee talk. I want to talk briefly about stocks. I have to sell some stock today. I have to. I'm invested in a Chinese coffee stock, and I need money right now, so I have to sell like. 500 shares and and stock stocks are infuriating because you always want it to go higher and stuff and it's like you let an algorithm decide your happiness because you're you're just waiting for this this number to go green and stuff but like there's like all these computer, these supercomputers around the world that are like doing pe transactions on the penny, and there's no way a single person can compete against them. Right? It's not fair competition. I think us melee fans know what we want to see is fair competition, and with stocks, it's not fair a lot of the times. And now, like, GME is up, AMC is up. What the, what the stock market wants you to do is it wants you to sell a safe stock and put all your money in AMC because it's, like, at $2 or something. It wants you to sell a guaranteed kind of safe investment and risk it all on a penny stock that could just collapse the next minute after you invest in it and it, it will never go back up you you buy it and it just continues to go down after that so that's why you see like these little stocks that go up it's all a trick it's like a bait and switch it's a scam that's it's for the smart people it's a scam for smart people Right, it's not a Nigerian prince emailing you asking you for for your uh, password. It's it's something a little deeper. One more scam I, I've noticed on Twitter recently is there is this gamer woman who went to Japan and she like photographed all these or Ocarina of Time locations. It's really cool, like to see inspiration for the water temple in a natural J Japanese setting is amazing. But that's that's just to get you in and that's to get you to follow her. And then the rest of her tweets are about crypto. So it's like the these people know that gamers like gaming content and they're trying to it's a bait and switch. First, I'll show you Zelda. Then, I'll talk to you about crypto. And I'm going to try to get your money out of your wallet, out of your bank account, to invest in my crypto coin. So, you follow her for the Zelda content, and you end up spending all your money on crypto. That's what they want. So, don't fall for investing scams. Honestly, I would say don't even invest in the stock market. Just invest in yourself. Invest in Pokemon cards. If you buy a holographic Charizard base set card, you probably won't lose a dollar if you try to sell that in a year. You're just gaining. So money is important. When we There's a lot of pressure about money and like for some people who are rich, it's not a problem, but for the majority of us, it is a problem. Even retired top players, they need money too. And it's not getting any easier to get money because it's inflating. Okay, last thing I want to say, congrats to Amsa and Plup for getting married. I am also married. It is a blessing to be married because you, you get access to your wife's Bank account. No, I'm just joking. You 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 get help from her parents. If if your wife comes from a good family, you get 
your family size doubles. And here's a little cheat code. It makes it a lot easier to ask your own parents for money. I hope my parents don't listen to this, this video. You can ask your parents for money for the baby. If you have a baby with your wife, you can just keep asking your parents for money. It's like Rosebud. It's Rosebud, semicolon, semicolon, whatever, in Sims. You just, you can get infinite money basically by having a baby. So getting married is good.